You're watching Shalom TV, celebrating Jewish culture. Funding for Shalom TV has been provided by the following. and by viewers like you. I'm Mark Golub, and during the past few months, the Republican Party has held numerous debates among those individuals hoping to become the Republican candidate for President of the United States. At one of those debates, former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich was asked to comment on a statement he has made in which he contends that the Palestinians are an invented people. After Mr. Gingrich defended that comment, other candidates on the stage challenged him, suggesting that his public position was not in Israel's interests because it did damage to the peace process. With a recent dinner of Rabbi Shlomo Riskin's or Torah Stone Educational Institutions in Israel, a wonderful dinner, by the way, which we will be featuring on Shalom TV as Rabbi Riskin and Pastor John Hagee engaged in conversation at the Museum of Jewish Heritage, a living memorial to the Holocaust in New York. We had the chance to speak to some of those attending the dinner to ask for their comments on the Gingrich statement that the Palestinians are an invented people. Here first, are the thoughts of one of the Jewish community's leading political commentators, Jeff Balaban. You're an observer of the political scene in America. Yes. You're a committed Jew. But we're in the midst of watching the Republicans try to choose their presidential candidate. Yes. And we have seen debate after debate after debate. There was a moment where a Jewish concern sort of came to the fore. It's when Newt Gingrich said that the Palestinians are an invented people. Yes. And there was a moment on stage when Mitt Romney and others challenged Newt Gingrich and said that his very saying it was in some way detrimental to the state of Israel. Can you in general tell me how you've reacted as you watch sort of the unfolding of the Republican attempt to choose their candidate and yeah. specifically what, did you have any reaction, Jeff, to the issue raised by Newt Gingrich? Sure. I mean, the truth is, I think you know my politics, Alan. I mean, I was very encouraged by it. I don't know if those are the right words, but the fact is there's a narrative now. And the narrative is that Israel may or may not have a right to exist, but there has to be a Palestinian state. The truth is, to the extent there's anything called a Palestinian, there were, it was Palestine, there were Jews, there were Arabs. For example, Jerusalem was two-thirds Jewish at the time, and people now claim that it's not Jewish at all. I think it's important to recognize that the idea of the Palestinian state primarily is an outgrowth of Oslo, and the idea that if we create yet another Arab state, a 23rd Arab state, then maybe there'll be peace. On the ground, in reality, we haven't seen that. So I think it's important for Mr. Gingrich and everyone to remind the world that there may well be another state, but if so, it's because we have certain goals safety and security for the Israelis, political suffrage for the Palestinians, who every single one does deserve it, and economic opportunity for all. But those are the goals, not simply the creation of a state because of a suffrage issue. There's no suffrage issue in my opinion. The truth is these are local Arabs. They're no more Palestinian versus Jordanian versus Syrian versus Egyptian than anything was in the local area when the West, uh, you know, sort of carved up those areas. It's a very Western notion to create it, and they're using it politically. We should know what our goals are. It's not suffrage for the Palestinians. It's safety and security and peace and prosperity for everybody, Jew and Arab alike. I want to make sure people understand you. If you felt that there was a leadership, a Palestinian leadership, yes. that was committed to honest peace, yes. that this was not a step in the destruction of Israel, that there was a real attempt to change charters, to change the way the textbooks are written, to change the rhetoric on Palestinian television, a real attempt to create a peaceful coexistence. At that point, would you be willing to support a two-state solution? I would support any solution, literally. And I mean this without any exception, without any exclusions, without any caveats. I would accept any solution of any kind which leads to less death, more peace, more safety for all involved. 
What that means is I don't even care what the government's called, what the nation is. It's not about that. For me, it's about peace, safety, security, and that's the bottom line. Everything is on the table. As always, it is a pleasure talking to you. We're going to yes. meet in studio yes. when I can sit down and really grill you. But He's I gone. thank Jeff. I thank you, Kol Tuva. All like the God. best. All the best. Thank Take you. Care. We also had the chance to speak with the executive vice chairman of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations, Malcolm Honline. Newt Gingrich makes a comment that stirs a lot in the pot that the Palestinians were an invented people. He's criticized on the stage of the debates for saying things that will harm the interests of the state of Israel. Malcolm, whether he's right or not, should he have said it or was it a mistake to say it? Uh, Newt Gingrich is a proven friend of the state of Israel and the Jewish people. I think what he intended to say was right about the some of the misrepresentation about the Palestinian people uh, as uh, or nation or their history. But it's a reality. And I think it evoked a response that was not intended, but should have been expected by the formulation that he put forward. Again, not because his intentions were wrong or even that factually he could not justify what he said, but in the, I think in the today climate, political climate, saying that they didn't exist when people see them and say, well, they do exist. People don't know the history beyond this. They don't know the history of the Middle East. They don't know Israel's 3,000 year history. People tell me all the time, well, Israel was created in 48. I said, you know, we have 3,000 years before that and that we are the only people in the same place speaking the same language and in, in, with the same culture, the same history, the same Torah as our great, great grandparents did 2,000, 3,000 years ago. And I said, and this is, this is the one state that is being delegitimized, that people question its right to be in the UN. And I think it's in that context that he meant to raise the question about, understand all the facts behind this conflict. One more quickie and you're gone. So right That's what now- you said last time. No, I didn't say one oh. more. No, no, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden, the Anglo-Jewish press is reporting that Israel Beitenu is proposing a law which would say that if you didn't serve in the IDF, you can't serve in the Israeli Knesset, you can't run or be elected. This would um, basically be aimed at ultra-Orthodox Jews, Haredim, who do not, at the moment, tend to serve in the IDF. And it would be aimed at Palestinian Israelis, Arab Israelis, who might eschew either serving in the IDF or even national service. Do you feel this is a real issue or is this a media issue? And how do you feel about it in general? Well, for one thing, uh, you know, the Haredi members of the Knesset, most of them served in the IDF. Uh, and many Arabs, increasing numbers of Arabs are serving in the Israeli Arabs in the IDF. I, I think that today it is not wise to put forward legislation that divides. Israel needs to overcome the divisions, not exacerbate them. I do think, though, that there has to be some accountability, and I think this is the motivation. There has to be some accountability on the part of what Arabs, Israeli Arab leaders say in the Knesset, elected officials, some of their actions going to consort with the enemy, that there has to be some accountability. I would like to see every Israeli contribute. If it's not serving in the army, then some sort of year of service or other ways to do it. I think the time has come to create a national commission of conciliation perhaps led by Shimon Peres, uh, initiated by the Prime Minister, with support and, and all the parties represented in the Knesset in the Commission to address the conflicts within the country. And as much as we're concerned about the external dangers, and they are very great, the only way you can confront those external dangers is if there's internal unity. And that is a critical challenge on all of the issues that we've seen. And a lot of it is exploited by the press, it's, uh, and it's distorted. It becomes a political issue. They use it against Bibi, they use it against others, against Haredim, against uh, secular Jews. This is unacceptable. We lost a temple because of the divisiveness and, and hatred amongst us. We can't afford to have our current temple destroyed. And I think this is an obligation that all of us should work and strive to see that we bring ourselves together, recognize our differences, and celebrate our differences but understand that we have far more in common and that what unites us is much greater than what divides us. It is always a pleasure and honor to speak to you and pleasure. good to be with you here 
at this dinner I, I or to our the sushi stone. table because of you. You seen that? Malcolm Holmline. One of the honorees at the Or Tora Stone dinner was Kenneth Bialkin, chair of the America Israel Friendship League. You have long been associated with the Republican Party. We had a moment on stage in one of the debates where Newt Gingrich talked about how the Palestinians are an invented people. He was criticized by others on the stage, for example, Mitt Romney, who said he was doing Israel a disservice by saying this at this point in history. How do you feel about what Newt Gingrich said? And is it your sense that even if he was right, it was not a good thing to say for the state of Israel well, today? Well, two things. I was there when he said it. It was in the context of a longer speech. It was a passing remark. It was describing them. He said the Palestinians are an invented people. By that he meant, and I agree, that there never was a Palestine. There is nothing known as a Palestinian people. When I grew up, Palestine was the place where Jews were trying to make a country. And what he was saying, the Palestinian people today are an amalgam of people who drifted into the region and who identified. Most of them came from Egypt or Iraq or, um, or Yemen uh, or Jordan. And so in that sense, it is, there was never a, a, a Palestine country. So he's 100% right. It wasn't so wise because people thought he was saying that therefore there should be no Palestinian state. He did not say that. He wasn't asked that. When he was asked that, he said, yes, there should be a Palestinian state. Those people have gotten together. They've established a commonality. That commonality deserves a sovereignty. The Prime Minister of Israel agrees with that. Most friends of Israel agree with it. I agree with it, you agree with it, and Newt Gingrich agrees with it. So to understand it, you have to know the whole story. I say again, Mazal Tov tonight on your award. You're being honored. You, you know I say it to you all the time, I love you, give me your hand. I love you and the contribution you make to Jewish life is indescribable and we will talk often, my friend. I don't know about contribution. But let me tell you something. Whatever that contribution is worth or cost me, the rewards that I get from whatever service I do more than compensates for anything I could do. Lovely. And I commend that to anybody who wants to learn the pleasure of doing something that makes you feel good. That's wonderful. Ken Bialkin. Finally, this week we had the chance to speak with Izzy Liebler in Israel about the proposed law that would require service in the Israeli army for one to be eligible for election to the Israeli parliament, the Knesset. I hope you have had a chance to see that interview. But we also had the chance to ask Izzy for his views on the Gingrich comment. So since I have you to talk to, I have been on this side of the ocean wanting to ask you a question that got an enormous amount of attention. Again, it came out of the Republican primary debates. And at one point, Newt Gingrich made his point that the Palestinian people are a made-up people and that while there might be a reason for a two-state solution, one should not forget history and that if one goes back to the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, there really was no discrete Palestinian people. Gingrich received, hold on, hold on. Gingrich received a great deal of criticism for, for that statement on the stage of the debates when a Mitt Romney and others on the stage argued that what Gingrich was saying would be counterproductive for the state of Israel. They weren't addressing the legitimacy of the comment. They were addressing the wisdom of going public with that comment. I want you to address this as an Israeli from within the Israeli system. Number one, to what extent is Gingrich correct factually? And number two, whether he's correct or incorrect, was he unwise to say this publicly? Did it create more problems for Israel than it may have solved? 
Well, let me say, first of all, that if one's talking in historical terms, nobody can deny that he's correct. When the State of Israel was established, there was no Palestinian people. The Syrians talked about Palestine as southern Syria, and there was no concept of a Palestinian nation. Having said that, in the context of what's taken place today, there certainly is some sort of a Palestinian entity which has emerged. And to that extent, I think it's irrelevant, and I don't see the benefit of raising it as of now. Some people will argue that the main factor which is motivating uh, the Palestinian, our Palestinian neighbours is not so much nationalism as getting rid of us. Uh, that's a, a valid point. But I think it is a futile exercise to kind of create questions of this nature in the context of suggesting that perhaps because they came in late, they're not a nation. As far as I'm concerned, anybody that calls themselves and feels a nation can call themselves a nation, even at a later stage. I know that won't uh, make some of my right-wing uh, colleagues happy, but that's a fact. Mm -hmm. They were not a people beforehand. They may be a people now, but if they call themselves a people, let them be one. Whatever happens, we don't want to rule over them. That's the important factor. So there are some thoughts concerning Newt Gingrich's contention that the Palestinians are an invented people and whether that statement was counterproductive for the state of Israel. What do you think? Should this statement have been made? Please share your thoughts with us. Email me or write me. Post on our Facebook wall or tweet me. I look forward to hearing from you. Until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. Be well, my friends.